Okay, guys, in this problem, I want to do a practice problem for multivariable functions. So first, like, let's take some multivariable function f of x, y. What we did before for like a regular calculus class, we were like wondering like uh, how to find the domain of the function, how to find the range, the range of the function. So let's general, generalize this concept to multivariable case. So before, like, remember, like, if we have some function f that looks like uh, that piece of the hyperbola, uh, then uh, what is going to be domain in a range uh, for my function in that case? So domain you can think about as all possible inputs for my function. Or in other words, if you're going to take the graph, it's going to be just projection of my blue graph onto x-axis. And you can see and then in this case, the projection is going to be between 1 and 3. So that's why the domain of my function is going to be the half open interval from 1 to 3. But range uh, using the same analogy, is going to be all possible outputs. So in this case, it's going to be projection of my blue graph onto the y-axis. So in this case, you can see that I'm going to get a half open interval from one half to positive infinity. And it's going to be range of my function. Now, like let's take some function f of xy is equal to 1 plus x squared plus y squared. Let's find the domain of that function. By definition, domain is going to be equal to the all possible inputs for x and y. Or in other words, we need to find the restriction for x and y and throw those restrictions away. But when I have just 1 plus x squared plus y squared, there is no restrictions. So my domain is going to be something interesting. Let's take a look at the previous example. Uh, for our like one-dimensional function, our domain was just x-axis. In which case, it's one-dimensional since we have just only one x component uh, as our input. But for multivariable function, we have two variables as our input. So our domain is going to be two-dimensional. And since there is going to be no restriction, then my domain is going to be just xy plane. I can write this using the set notation or in other words, or like another approach, I can write this as a plane and just indicate my domain by that blue region. So uh, let's find the range of our function. So range by definition is going to be all possible outputs of f. Let's write uh, our function down. I'm going to have 1 plus x squared plus y squared. And what we don't like about this function. We don't like that we have a new variable y squared. So let's find the range of our function if we don't have uh, that variable y squared. Then in that case, I'm going to have x f of x is equal to 1 plus x squared, and I'm going to have a parabola, which is shifted by 1 along y-axis. And then you can see that in that case, my range is going to be is just between 1 and positive infinity. And this is going to be the range for my original multivariable function. But if you don't like this argument, let's take a look at the more algebraic argument when I'm going to take just x squared plus y squared bigger or equal than zero. And then I'm going to add one to the both sides. I will have x squared plus y squared plus one bigger or equal than uh, one. And then in this case, my function is going to be bigger or equal than one. So you can see every time I'm going to make my x and y bigger and bigger and bigger, I'm always going to reach some value along the axis. So that's why it's going to belong to my range. So my range is going Going to be between 1 and positive infinity. And another perspective, this is just a paraboloid. If I'm going to sketch my paraboloid and shift it by 1 along the axis, then you can see that my domain is going to be projection of my paraboloid onto the xy plane. Or in other words, I'm going to have uh, like that shaded blue region. And what is my range? My range is going to be projection of my paraboloid onto the axis. So that's why I'm going to have that orange line between 1 and positive infinity. And this, this is how you should think about multivariable functions, where domain is going to be just projection onto xy plane, and range is going to be projection onto the axis. Okay, let's discuss some of the restrictions that we have for our function. And for that, let's come back to calculus 1. So first function that we like studied and uh, that we understand is square root of x. So in this case, you can see that x cannot be negative. So that's why that's we have only one restriction. And in other words, that means that we have x bigger or equal than zero. Or if you're going to sketch that region, I'm going to just sketch my zero and I need to choose all points to the right of my zero. So that's why domain is going to be between zero and positive infinity when I'm going to include zero. My second function is going to be uh, a fraction. If I'm going to take 1 over x, then x in that case cannot be a 0 because uh, we cannot divide by 0. So in other words, x doesn't equal to 0. Or if we're going to, again, like graph our domain, I'm going to have the whole real line without 0. Or in other words, domain is between negative infinity and 0, union 0, positive infinity. And our like last function that I want to discuss is uh, a len of x. And in that case, uh, if I have my x, then x 
cannot be negative and also x cannot be zero. So in other words, I'm going to have that x is going to be strictly bigger than zero. Uh, and if I'm going to graph this region, I'm going to again indicate zero as an open circle and everything to the right. Uh, so I'm going to have that my domain is equal to zero to positive infinity. Uh, also, we can combine those restrictions together. So let's take function uh, y is equal to 1 over square root of x plus 2 times x minus 1. And then uh, what is going to be like our domain in that case? So first of there that if a, you have a square root, then also always take the inside of your square root. In this case, is at x plus 2. And just uh, make it bigger or equal than 0. So then I'm going to obtain that x is bigger or equal than negative 2. So if I'm going to sketch uh, that partial domain so far, I'm going to have negative 2 and everything to the right. Observe that we have square root in the denominator. So that's mean that we are not allowed to have zero. In other words, x plus two doesn't equal to zero or x doesn't equal to negative two. So that's why I'm going to indicate my negative two as an open circle. And we also cannot have that x minus one is equal to zero. So in other words, x minus one doesn't equal to zero. So x doesn't equal to one. So that's why I'm going to indicate one as an open circle. And then my domain is going to be uh, an open interval between negative two and one, union open interval from one to positive infinity. Let's do our la last example. Let's take a function ln of one minus x squared minus y squared. So what is our restriction? Restriction is if you see the logarithm, it means it takes just inside part and set it strictly bigger than zero. Or in other words, you're going to obtain that one minus x squared minus y squared is strictly bigger than zero. Or in other words, that x squared plus y squared is strictly less than one. And that region, that domain is going to be some region in xy plane. So let's sketch that region. So first, you know that x squared plus y squared is going to be a circle, but I'm going to take everything inside the circle since we have a strictly less inequality sign. So that means if you're going to take point zero zero, for example, then it's going to satisfy our, our inequality. So that's why it's going to be our domain. And since we have strictly inequality sign, then it means there is no boundary. So my domain, in that case is going to be an open circle and everything inside that circle. So I'm going to have basically that open ball without a boundary.